I think we can all fight from our own trenches, right? Mm -hmm. And my trench is image making. And, you know, mm -hmm. everyone can struggle and, and kind of push for a change from any discipline. Welcome to Pictay Meets. As investment leaders at Pictay, we adopt a long-term approach and focus on partnership. We take our responsibilities to current and future generations seriously. In this series, we're inviting thought leaders, scholars, innovators, artists, to ask for questions and to share ideas that are gonna shape our world in the years to come. My name is Mary Trace Barton, equity partner of the Pictay Group and head of Emerging Market Fixed Income at Pictay Asset Management. In this edition of Pictay Meets, we're joined by Carolina Quesado, a multidisciplinary artist who works and researches community-based alternative energy production in the Americas. We're going to be talking about Carolina's project, Be Damned. This is based on Columbia's rivers, which you can see all around us in here in the Serpentine Gallery and our wider relationship to water as a society, the role foreign investment in developing countries can play, and as we approach COP27, the value of conferences like this to tackle these issues for the future. Carolina, congratulations on being part of this really wonderful exhibition at the Serpentine, Back to Earth. We were just discussing how it's really quite apt that this is really wrapping around the gallery, the idea of rivers and water as a source of life in the concept of this topic. As we look at your work here, um, it really is fascinating. I'd, I'd love to actually understand a little bit more about this project. So this is part of a, a larger series that started in 2014 that uses satellite imagery <clears throat> that I acquire, you know, kind of from different brokers, if you wish. Like at some point, satellites were owned by different countries. And at, at a certain point, they became privatized, as many of our common goods. Uh, and, and so you can go ahead and kind of look into a roster of satellite imagery. And I started to do that and realize kind of the encroachment of the construction, the devastation that was starting to be visible in those series of images. So it was a way to access a place I couldn't visit. And then I realized that actually a lot of investors is the way that they look at the places where they invest in because they normally don't actually have a large stake more than investing and money making. So that's a way that people kind of follow up construction is by looking at satellite imagery of the advancement of the construction. But if you think about what is this perspective doing, it's really consolidating a perspective of power, a view from above, and a militaristic perspective, right? Because that's, and as any camera technology, it has started in the military development, really. Mm -hmm. And so it is a military view, it is the view of the bombarder, it is the view of the drone that we're actually trying to hack up with this piece. I actually think that's something we can learn from as investors as well. You know, the, um, the importance of stepping back and taking the big view and actually increasingly what we're being challenged on is thinking about sustainability and future outcomes, better outcomes for the planet, for the countries, for investors. You know, really it's, it should be a win-win for everybody, in particular in terms of the environment and the planet. And I think for too long as investors, we've been very myopic and looking at the very balance sheets and looking at fiscal accounts, but actually, taking the satellite view is, mm -hmm. is very important and having conversations like this but is really important. Complexifying that view, right? Mm -hmm. Cartography or Western cartography tends to want to show us a simplified um, view or perspective of a territory, but sometimes the simplification blurs out the biocultural diversity that you find in a place. Mm -hmm. So the idea with these pieces is actually not to clarify uh, you know, and to show you a clear image of a particular place, but actually to layer it and complexify it uh, to give account of actually what really goes on 
on the territories. So the color is really following the color of the territories, the color of the environmental catastrophe and crime, and then ends up with a more hopeful <laughs> and you know, kind of more kind of very bright colors of actually a, re a river healing. And it's incredible to see how, you know, the change of coloring also transpires from this kind of toxic mud sludge into this kind of bluish, healthy land and water. So your art and your activism are so closely entwined. Do you think art can play a, a bigger role in activism on many of these issues? Yeah, absolutely. I don't consider myself an activist because activists oh, in my country yes. get killed. Uh, and Colombia is a place where more mm. killed environmentalists, um, you know, in the last year, in the last two years together with Brazil and Philippines. So, you know, I, I don't want to claim that. Also, I'm a bit wary of the word activism because it takes agency from all of us. It seems like the only people who can do something are the activists. And I think we can all fight from our own, you know, from our own trenches, right? And my trench is image making. And, you know, everyone can struggle and, and kind of push for a change from any discipline. So in that sense, I think, yes, art can accompany folks on the front lines, accompany legal processes accompany you know all sorts of activist processes um, you don't have to be an activist as an artist to accompany and generate counter narratives and counter visuals that can go hand in hand with more legal or you know straight up activist direct action <clears throat> processes i don't think art on its own or any you know uh, discipline or skill on its own has the power to change systematic or structural injustice. I think we all have to work together. And I believe more and more in kind of uh, multidisciplinary working tables or working groups where you pair artists with scientists, with sociologists, with uh, econom economists and politicians, right? We all need to move together. Uh, and say that also with community leaders, environmentalists, you know, the woman who sells street food in the street corner. You know, everyone has their particular perspective. It's not that as experts or folks that have gone through the academy, then we exclude other ways of knowledge, other ways of seeing the world. We actually have to kind of incorporate folks in the front line. I've been investing in markets in, in the Americas now for um, 20 years. Um, and really, it's probably only in the last five we're being challenged by our clients, but also ourselves in terms of our commitment to responsible investment, to be thinking about the future, thinking about the longer term sustainability um, for these countries, for our investors, for the world. Um, and really water, it often comes back to water. Water in terms of excess, water in terms of scarcity, sanitation, access to water, the importance of access to water in terms of education, particularly education for young women. Um, what do you think is the biggest issue with water which the world is facing? Um, I think uh, perhaps two larger problems is, one is the pri privatization of waters through dam building, uh, through channeling of waters, through co-optation or uh, transferring water from its natural kind of riverbed or lake into agro-industrial processes. And I think the other large um, concern is the contamination of water. Uh, so I'm worried about the word sustainability because mm -hmm. sustainability, you know, the, the actual meaning of it is to maintain the rate of something. And if we keep the rate of production and consumption, we're all gonna be doomed. I prefer the word sustenance, which is to care for something. And they both have the same etymological root, but they're quite different in their meaning. So how can we sustain and take care for our waters and our nature and an environment and our common house? It's our home, the planet is our home. Instead of thinking about how to maintain the rate of, of our life.
perhaps that's where I think COP27 and these wider places for a forum have a place in terms of driving that exchange. And of course, from there, you know, that trickle down effect and, you know, localised mm -hmm. solutions. And, you know, I, I really hope in, in my career and in my role is that we can have our positive impact in that in the years to come as well. Absolutely. And, and just maybe to ground it and maybe to wrap up, you know, we have to think broadly about transition. Transition is not only about building new ways, but also decommissioning and dismantling old ways. And actually this piece is looking at that. You know, we have to start dismantling old, obsolete, oppressive infrastructure in order to move forward. So um, in terms of completing the conversation, in, in Europe, we've witnessed the worst drought in 500 years. In Pakistan, we have seen devastating floods. Really, there's a sense of water in terms of its excess, but also in its scarcity. The title of your series is Be Damned. It's the obvious question, are we damned? Yeah, but spells can be broken. So we have to, you know, do our magic. Thank you to Carolina, our guest on a special episode of Pictay Meets. Please follow at Pictay Group on social media to keep up with new episodes. Thank you so much, it's been my pleasure.